Hi students, welcome back. Today I am going to talk to you about one of the most wonderful books of theatre that is Natya Shastra. And what is the relevance of Natya Shastra today? The impact of Natya Shastra in traditional Indian theatre on contemporary theatre practice. Bharat Muni's Natya Shastra has remained an Akara Granth, authentic source book for centuries, containing within itself a systematic presentation of the conceptual framework of theory and practice of the tradition of performing arts that is followed in India even today. It is believed that Natya Shastra was discovered sometimes in the 19th century with Sir William Jones being the first scholar to have referred to it in the preface of his 1789 edition of Abhignan Shakuntal in English translation. Later, in the second half of the 19th century, Natya Shastra attracted the attention of several scholars in Europe and India who referred to it in their writing. They include H. H. Williams, uh, Select Specimens of Theatre of Hindus, 1826, Fritz Edward Hall, Dashrupak in 1865, Paul Regenon, French translation of Natya Shastra around 1880, Grosset, Critical Edition of Natya Shastra, 1888-1898, Kavyamala Edition of Natya Shastra, prepared on the basis of two different copies of one manuscript in 1894, Ramakrishna Kavi, first volume of Natya Shastra with Abhinav Bharati, the Gayakwar Oriental series, Baroda in 1926. Three more volumes were released in 1934, 1954 and 1964. Batuknath Sharma and Baldev Upadhyay, edition of Natya Shastra under Kashi Sanskrit series, 1927. Manmohan Ghosh, Critical edition of Natya Shastra in English translation, Calcutta. R.S. Nagar, text edited with Abhinav Bharati on basis of four editions from Delhi. In recent years, scholars like N.P. Unni, complete edition of Natya Shastra with English translations and note based on Kerala edition by Narayan Peshroti. R. Gnoli, Textual studies on the rasa portion of Abhinav Bharati, Ramaswamy, K. Krishnamurti, T. S. Nandi, Rajendra Nanabati, S. K. Belvelkar have worked on Natya Shastra. As of now, the Natya Shastra edition, the K. M. edition, the K. S. S. edition, the G. O. S. edition, the Kolkata edition, Delhi edition, and Kerala edition are considered worthy of note by academicians and scholars. The manuscripts of Natya Shastra or their copies have been found from Almora, Andhra Pradesh, Bengal, Darbhanga, Chennai, Nepal, Pune, Tiruvananthapuram, Ujjain and Tamil Nadu. These have been found in Bhojimol, Nevari and Devanagari scripts. Natya Shastra in modern times. Though India has an ancient and an active tradition of indigenous theatre and performance in each region, the influence of colonialism brought with it an onslaught of realistic theatre popular in the United Kingdom and Europe. It led to the emergence of Parsi theatre in India. Ravindranath Tagore in Bengal and Bhartendu Harishchandra at Kashi Banaras made strong efforts to regenerate the spirit of Indian theatre and these efforts led to a revival of interest in Natya Shastra and later to create the concept of a national theatre that was taken up by a number of scholars and theatre experts. It ultimately led to the establishment of the National School of Drama in New Delhi, the Kalidas Academy in Ujjain and the Kerala Kala Mandalam in Kerala, Tiruvananthapuram and so on. Such activities raise the very significant issues of continuity and change in traditional Indian forms of theatre and scholars 
such as Dr. Kapila Vatsayan, who began and did tremendous work on establishing the interlinks between Natya Shastra and the regional form of theater. Their work has been also been able to establish the interaction between Natya Shastra and regional theater in India has not been a one-way affair, but that regional theatric traditions contributed significantly to restructuring of the Natya Shastra text from time to time. In fact, during what was believed to have been a period of apparent discontinuity of Natya Shastra tradition during the medieval times, its legacy continued to quietly thrive in textual traditions through the contributors of such authors as Dhanika, Dhananjaya, Ramchandra, Gunachandra, Hemchandra, Sarangdev, Sharad Tanaya, Sagar Nandin, Jay Senapati, Someshwara, Shuddha Kalasha, Amrutand Yogina, Vishwanath, Kumbha, Pundarika, Vithala, Shubhankara, Raghunatha, Veera Prasada and other active during the dark ages of the middle age. Several such in-depth research studies have also been able to prove that Natya Shastra not only exercised its influence on regional Indian theatre traditions, but also on the theatric traditions of neighbouring Asian countries like Bali, Indonesia, Siam, Thailand, Japan, particularly the No Theatre. M. L. Varad Pandey re-examined the question of interrelationship between Indian and Greek traditions of theatre and aesthetics during pre-Christian era. Bharat Gupta studied links between Sanskrit drama and Greek drama through various existing models of ancient Greek theatre. Among the latest is researcher such as Lara Gon Moekmin, whose work questioned Greek influence on Sanskrit theatre to reaffirm the divergence between the two streams. Natya Shastra, therefore, is just not a text. It is a tradition of theatre that has remained vibrant till today. Traditional Indian Theatre and Natya Shastra Friends, through the efforts of Maria S. Bairiski and F. B. J. Krupier, as well as several Indian scholars, the question of the origin of Indian drama has been resolved. It is now proven that most obvious source of Indian theatre is Vedic tradition that itself was an assimilation of other streams of traditions as well. The publications of Bharata's Natya Shastra complete with Abhinav Bharati from Baroda in 1964 coincides with a fresh interest of theatre person not only in Natya Shastra but also in Kodiyattam and numerous forms of traditional folk theatre scattered throughout India. Natya Shastra also covers a wide range of artistic disciplines such as music, dance, prosody, dramaturgy, aesthetics, architects on one hand and philosophy, psychology, myth, ritual, grammar, phonetics, geography and others on the other. It is an astonishingly seminally rich work which brings together all the theatrical traditions of every region of the Indian subcontinent. Dear students, Natya Shastra has been a continuous and a significant source for Sanskrit theatre to draw upon from the days of Kalidas and other Sanskrit playwrights such as Shudrak, Vishakhadatta, Bhavabhuti, Harsh, Bhattanarayan, Bodhayan and Mahendra Vikrama. It has also been a determining force for the genesis of later forms of traditional Indian theatre. The researchers have found how a number of Uprupakas or the minor plays had emerged in pre-medieval India that had their source traced to Kohala, a student of Bharata. Abhinav Gupta, Bhoj and Sharad Taneya have offered a lot of important information on these Uprupakas.
this new development related to Sanskrit theatre is likely to shed more light on the aspect related to continuity and growth of traditional Indian theatre. The Paraxis part of Natya Shastra is often understood through the commentary by Abhinav Gupta that is presented under Natya Veda Vritti or Abhinav Bharati combined with the stage directions provided in Sanskrit plays and reference found in literary sources, old commentaries on Sanskrit plays, text on dance, drama and music as well as commentaries found on the dramatic text of regional theatre forms. Sanskrit theatre as well as several pre-medieval and medieval traditional theatre forms such as Kodiyatam, Yakshagan, Kathakali, uh, Ankyanad Bhavana, Ramlila, Raslila, Bhavai, so on and so forth that developed in different parts of India have been inspired by Natya Shastra even when they continued to be very deeply rooted into their own regional traditions and text. These traditions and text were kept active and changed according to the trends of their times. There was a marked shift as a number of new trends emerged forcefully. Those largely responsible for this were Kulashekhar Varman in South and Rajashekhar in the North, who introduced innovation in Sanskrit drama writing and provided fresh stimuli by assimilating new trends prevailing in their own regions. Kulashekhar Varman infused new strength in the ancient Kuryatam tradition of Kerala preserved by the Chakyas and also composed new plays. Raj Shekhar wrote plays in Sanskrit as well as Prakrit. His Prakrit play Karpur Manjuri is an example of Sataka. Sataka is a variety of Uparupaka. Another well-known playwright Vatsaraja revoked older forms like Samvarakara and Dima of the Rupaka and introduced new content and themes. The playwright Kshemivara brought about revolutionary changes in the basic concept of Nataka. While there were numerous regional theatre traditions, there are three that stand out in their strong connection to the continuity of Sanskrit theatre. These are the Kuryatam of Kerala, the Yakshagan of Karnataka and the Ankyanad Bhavana of Assam. Kuryatam continues to follow the tradition of Sanskrit drama with only pure Sanskrit text. It is often termed as the only surviving form of Sanskrit theatre traditions in entire India. It also provides an excellent example of a truly complex process for transformation of the text into performance which is valuable and a unique legacy of Natya Shastra tradition. It follows a rhythmic and stylized theatre form which has been explained etymologically by K. Ayappa Panikar, describing it as ensemble acting. He also maintains that actors are free to go beyond the verbal text of the play as written by the playwright and bring in related episodes from other texts. On the other hand, uh, the Assamese Ankyanad Bhavana interacts with modern languages in north and northeastern region of India and Nepal. This is also closely related to the development of Kirtanya Natak in Mithila, Bihar and Nevari Natak in Nepal. The Assamese Shankar Dev was the first important dramatist who understood the importance of dramatic language and introduced Brajabauli which was a fusion of Maithali, Braj, Asamya and few other languages which were probably widely understood in the region where his plays were performed. Scholars believe this region to be as vast as the cover Nepal, Bihar, Assam, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Haryana, Rajasthan and even sometimes as remote as Gujarat, Maharashtra, Odisha. Shankar Dev is believed to have created a new form of Sanskrit theatre in keeping with the regional rigour of Assamese theatre by assimilating the elements of Natya Shastra in it as well. While the textual content of Shankar Dev's play retained the structure of prose dialogue, 
he invariably mingled words on one hand and the use of Sanskrit text with Brajboli on the other. These techniques also preserve the use of Dhruva like song coinciding with the entry and exit as prescribed in Natya Shastra. That also brings a pious Vaishnavite himself Shankar Dev's devotion to Rama and Krishna as well as an interaction with the Acharyas of Bhakti movement, pilgrimages to important Tirthasthanas in North India and Orissa led to a rise of a unique theatre form that marked the continuity of Sanskrit theatre and the further evolution of Ramlila form by Tulsidas and Rasa form by Haridas. This development also impacted the way traditional temple theatre forms began to take shape outside temple premises. They also indicate that these forms originated from Uparupakas like Sangeetaka. As a dominant temple theatre form, Ankyanat has an affinity with Rasa and Ramalila. When we examine the form of Sanskrit theatre, we find that its core structure develops along two parallel lines held by Sutradhar and the Vidushaka respectively. These two characters are often found in regional theatre forms as well. The role of a Sutradhar in its performative aspect allowed him to freely intervene and carry forward the flow of the play through his comments for the benefit of the audience. This has become a valuable source of understanding the theatre style and structure of old Sanskrit plays. This role is an integral part of Yakshagana from Karnataka, Bhagavat Mela Natakam Tamil Nadu, Ramalila and Rasalila from Uttar Pradesh and other popular forms. Shankar Dev's Ramavijay Natak is one of the best examples. To tell you, such indications point to the unique aspect of continuity of traditional Indian theatre and now that its interrelatedness is clearly proven, more importantly, it is perceived as a mark of clear identity of Indian theatre. This has also led a few noted contemporary theatre directors to use traditional theatre forms in creative contemporary adaptations. The multiple levels of language Sanskrit, Prakrit and Apabramsh also make Sanskrit theatre quite unique. Sometime Apabramsh is replaced by a local popular language such as Malayalam in Kudiyattam and this is generally used by Vidushaka. The Vidushak also freely moves between time of the dramatic text and the time of contemporary to him. The Vidushak also takes the liberty to ridicule whatever he finds to be reviewed, criticized and reformed. Female characters spoke in Prakrit. Kudiyatam, which traces his history back 2000 years, is an excellent example demonstrating the continuity of a performance of Sanskrit plays and most valuable for understanding several aspects of the principles embodied in Natya Shastra. Friends, if one only takes the Kuryatam from the south and the Ankya Nad Bhavana from the north as dominating forms that charted the course of the development of traditional Indian theatre from that drew from the Natya Shastra as well as the regional influences, one can study the evolution of Sanskrit theatre in different regions of the country. In addition to textual content, form, acting principles, language and accompanying music, these two forms also illustrate the remarkable fact that Natya Shastric concept of the Natya Mandapa can be seen reflected in Namagraha of Assam and Kutampalam of Kerala. The guiding principles for the use of theatrical space, both horizontal and vertical, can be seen perceived not only in these dominant forms but in also almost all other performances of the north and the south of India. Natya Shastra and Contemporary Theatre Practice Contemporary theatre and theatre artists in India continue to be influenced by techniques and styles from Sanskrit 
as well as traditional theatre forms. This is apparent in the work of modern Hindi dramatist Dharmavir Bharti, who chose to move away from Western theatre practices, that is, the Aristotelian practices that inspired modern Hindi theatre in post-independent era. For instance, Dharmavir Bharti introduced the Sutradhar once again in playwriting after Bhartendu and also infused poetic form into the text. Similarly, playwrights such as Chandrasekhar Kambar in Kannada and Lakshminara in Lal in Hindi also drew from elements in popular folk forms including content. Where theatre directors are concerned, eminent theatre persons such as K. N. Panikar from Kerala and Ratan Thiyam from Manipur have incorporated several elements from traditional Indian theatre in their works in such emphatic and creative ways that they have offered interesting new directions to postmodern challenge that faces Indian contemporary theatre. In the beginning of the 21st century, the situation has become more complex. Theatre, as we have known it now, faces the challenge from technology that has completely altered our understanding of the speed with which communication can take place. Theatre persons Eugenio Barba voiced the concern for a possible extinction of traditional theatre forms was in Copenhagen in the year 2000 when he organised a festival of traditional performances forms from China, Japan, South Korea, India and European opera. Theatre has been overwhelmed by the vast wave of TV and video films that focus on the importance of the here and now, of the presence rather than representation and narrative. This has caused a sense of distance, special and temporal, to vanish. Whatever is happening in any point of the world is often available to us to experience at the same moment that it is happening. This experience of presence taking place here and now in our routine life, this overpowering illusion of presence available to us via the electronic media has seriously blurred our vision so much that we have drifted away from representational art forms and specially representational theatre. The emergence of film and video and its subsequent popularity have faced a major challenge to traditional theatre and specially Asian traditional theatre. There are two issues here. Modern or rather postmodern audience have little patience with classical language, formal ancient clothing, out of sync ideologies or politically incorrect ways of thinking. There are also not very tolerant of receiving or reviving a form that they imagine has no place in contemporary context. Then there is another issue of the new technology itself. This new technology has introduced a novel mode of expression that Richard Schechner calls restoration of behavior. A film director would shoot a strip of film which he later rearranges and reconstructs in a way that is completely independent of casual system, social, psychological, technical, technological, temporal that has brought into its existence. Thus, the reality in which the film was shot and the reality portrayed in the same film, once technology is done with it, are likely to be very different ones. Thus, technology gives immense power to modern electronic mass media to alter and focus on the reality the way they want to. This immense power to regulate and alter the response of viewers has been able to rob the viewers or the receptors of all freedom to review or reject a thought or an experience presented to them. Strangely, a lot of people are fine with this and this has caused theatre to withdraw majorly from public space 
as viewers are disappearing and there is a total transformation of public taste. This death of theater scenario, however, will likely and hopefully emerge a new form of post-modern theater in India, even maybe Asia. Researchers and thinkers of theater and its form believe that traditional Indian theater is not as dependent on reproduction of reality or mimesis as is generally presumed. It is more of a retelling of a bhava, which cannot be really defined in terms of mimesis. Hence, there is no compulsion to look at it in terms of representation, pure and simple, or the presence as defined by Western postmodern thought. The idea of presence in Oriental philosophy has three dimensions, past present, present present, and future present. Therefore, the aesthetic viewing or the aesthetic view arising from such a thought is totally different from postmodern one which emerges from its phenomenal and empirical presumptions. The multi-layered openness of oriental thinking offers poetic meanings that are fundamentally different from the naturalistic and realistic theatre forms of European theatre of the 18th and the 19th centuries. In that sense, Indian traditional theatre is surprisingly closer to the postmodern notion of theatre to the extent that it rebels against one-dimensional ritualistic theatre. Thank <laughs> you.